Simon Kolasinski. Currently the best cuber in the world. Do you know the story? There was this battle going on to get the first sub 5 average in the world. Now Timon could have had it a while ago, but he plus to a 3.7 second solve, which would have been the second fastest solve ever. But obviously that didn't stop him. Because just a few weeks ago, Timon got the first official sub 5 average, but not just in a normal way. After doing his fourth solve, he had the world record average, but it turned out the fourth scramble was a mid scramble. Basically the scrambler did a wrong move, so the solve didn't count. So what happened, Timon got an extra solve. Everyone was just like staring at him. The pressure on him was immense. So what happened? You know what? Let me just show you. That was a 4.56 second soul, resulting in the world record average. The guy is insane. And that guy just released his own cube. What does a cube need for a guy that turns over 10 turns a second? We're gonna see what comes with the cube, what's so special about it. And I also wanna do a little experiment to see if I can really break the world record using this cube. <laughs> Yo, let's get started. The cube comes in a cubicle signature series bag, which is a series of cubes that are professionally set up to be exactly the same as the people who use it prefer. Let's see what's inside the bag. And the bag is empty. You get a cube stand, the accessories box with the cube bag, some tools and the papers. But let's get rid of the boring stuff and check out the cube. It comes in this GAN case that I cannot open. And you will notice that the cube comes pre-scrambled. And this scramble is in fact the exact scramble he got on his sixth solve for his world record breaking average. The one I talked about before, the most epic solve ever. So let's see how I, Cupid, would solve this scramble. I noticed right away that the cube was way slower than I expected it to be. But that makes sense because there's so many loops in this cube that you need to do a lot of souls for them to break in, which I exactly did. I think my first impressions were that the cube was very controllable and stable, which had me turning a bit more accurately than I normally do, but it also resulted in some good times. But I quickly realized that I needed to get used to this cube. And the reason for that is that the cube is set up in a much different way than I would normally set up my cubes. And I think a lot of people wouldn't expect this cube to be set up the way that it is. But talking about the setup, I texted Phil from the cubicle to ask him about what the development process was like. And he responded with this. There was a period of time when we weren't so sure what cube he liked more. Because he had set that 5.09 world record with the 11 late last year. The previous world record that Timon had was a 5.09 average. Back then, he was using the GAN 11M Pro, which was the flagship from the year before. Now, this is kind of strange because a lot of people were thinking that the 11 was a better performer than the 12 because why would he stick to the 11 but my theory is that Timon does a lot of souls a day like hours upon hours as much as I'm awake minus 18 and when you've been using a puzzle for a year or even longer, it's gonna be really difficult to switch to a new puzzle. So that's why I think there was a delay for Timon to switch from the 11 to the 12. So we know what puzzle he is using. He's using the highest tier GAN flagship on the market, which is probably the most expensive cube there is right now. It is even UV coded, because why not? But here he gets noteworthy. Phil said he likes his cube on the slower side. Now that sounds like a contradiction, right? Because why would a fast solver want a slow cube? I think a lot of people mistakenly think that the fastest cubers use the fastest cubes. Because the faster you turn, the more controllable you want your cube to be. Like if you're turning so fast, it becomes so much easier to make a mistake. Overshooting, plus twos, corner twists. And that's why I think that Timon prefers the cube that is the most reliable. To give an example, out of the 100 souls I did with this cube, I didn't get a single corner twist. So how did he do it? Well, there's actually four ways you can customize the feel of your GAN 12M Megla. The first one and the most significant change is loops. Cube loops, that is. The cubicle is known to have a plethora of different loops that all alter the feel of your cube. There's loops to slow your cube down, to speed them up, to make them more gummy, more glidey. And in Timon's cube, there's both angstrom loops, which make the cube more controllable and smooth. And there's also DNM37, which makes the cube faster. To give an idea of the result, I want to play a game with you guys. I'm gonna play the sound of the stock cube versus Timon's cube, and I want you guys to guess which one is which. And now the second one. Write your guesses down, and... How did you do? Now there isn't a huge difference in sound, except that Timon's cube is slightly more muffled. But not quite as much as the Yo cube, which just has the best sound in the world. Although there isn't a big difference sound-wise, there is definitely a big difference feel-wise. Is that English? 
let's just say it is English. The loops provide this very natural feeling resistance that just makes the cube more controllable. And in my opinion, you really need that with a cube like this because a stock GAN cube is just way too fast. But the loops aren't the only thing that Demon customized on this cube. What plus two? The rest of the adjustments happen on the cube itself. Okay, that went flying. This is GAN's dual adjustment system where you make all the changes using this magical tool. Here's how that tool works. You have the capsid head and in there you can find the DNA or the nucleic A. Using this side of the tool, you can change the center travel. Demon sets this cube at two. This influences the corner cutting of the cube. Number two means that the corner cutting isn't great, but the cube becomes more pop resistant or reliable. And then again, you don't need all the corner cutting, just turn a bit more accurately. Using the other side of the tool, you can adjust the tension of the maglev. Because this cube replaces springs by using two magnets that repulse each other. Called maglev technology. Since you don't have a spring, you have a bit less fraction, which results in a cube that's a bit more smooth. Having setting 5 means that the cube is pretty tight. Once again, resulting in a very stable cube. And for the last adjustment, I'm gonna take the cube apart to show you something. Magnets. Wow. The GAN-12 uses corner core magnets, which you can adjust in two ways. You can replace the stem of the magnet by the other one in the box, or you can adjust this little lever in the corners. Demon's cube has the middle setting, which results in just a satisfying magnetic feel. Oh yeah, and because of the core magnets, the cube automatically turns itself. That's crazy. To summarize what this all means, it seems to me like Demon really wanted to have the most reliable setting that you can set on the GAN-12 and Maglev without compromising the performance. Now, truth be told, I had to get used to this tighter, more stable setting on this cube. But as you can see right here, I was getting crazy good times. This is the five from the beginning of the video, which made that I had a counting six. So this solve right here could potentially give me my PB average. And honestly, I'm not sure if this is my PB average. What the heck? Now the overall 100 souls weren't anything amazing, but if I'm able to set my maybe PB average, this cube must have something to it. <laughs> Bonus challenge! Here I have the scramble the cube comes in. And for this challenge, let me explain what Demon did. He set up his first pair during cross, then he did pretty normal F2L, but he slashed his last pair, which resulted in a soon and a T perm. Did you get it? Now, this 4.56 second solve consisted of 54 moves, which he performed in almost 12 turns per second. And my goal for today is to beat that. Here's how that goes I will give myself the same scramble over and over again, and I will time myself doing his solution until I can defeat his time. How long do you guys think this will take me? So, here's my first attempt. So, basically, I don't, I'm not used to the solution yet so right now i have to think a lot so it won't be that fast but still 6.7 seconds i think that's pretty decent because the next time i was able to do better i had practiced for almost four minutes and after doing the same solution over and over again it took 11 minutes to get my first sub six soul since this felt already pretty great for me i was kind of worried that i would never be able to break demons time I tried switching to the Yo Cube Deluxe, which I'm very used to, but that didn't really help, surprisingly. I was slowly getting better results, but sub 5 just seemed impossible. Since I wasn't really improving anymore, I decided to have a 30 minute cutoff. And then this solve happened. Honestly, maybe if I practice for another half an hour, I would get sub 5, but doing 4.5 just seemed ridiculous. You know, when I started this challenge, I honestly thought that I was gonna succeed, but not being able to do so kind of grew my respect for the guy. Like, Timon, if you're watching this, please give me your fingers. Also, if you're watching as a cuber, please try this yourself. Give yourself half an hour, memorize a solution, see how fast you can get. And if you're a real G, use Timon's cube. So the question now is, should you buy this cube? It depends. Well, you can say that about most anything. It depends. Of course, it depends. Now, we shouldn't forget the fact that this cube is $90, but it is cheaper than you think. How can $90 be cheaper than you think? Well, the original GAN 12M Maglev is already... Actually, I need to check. $78, so it's just a $12 difference to get it professionally set up. Because the guys at the cubicle know what they're doing, and you don't want to be messing up your own $78 cube. But then again, do you need it? Well, there's a really strong pitch for Demon's cube, and that is, if you want the cube that the best person in the world uses, you can buy it, which is just super cool. And also, guys, you shouldn't forget that if you buy this cube, you will support Demon because a small part goes to him. I don't know the exact amount or anything, but I just know with my own cube, the Yo cube, that a part goes to me. And it helps a lot, guys. Like, literally, it has made it possible for this to be my job. So, honestly, thank you. Uh, same goes for Timon. So, if you want to support the guy, which he definitely deserves, go ahead and buy it. And maybe use discount code CUPED so we can both benefit from it. Huh? I feel like this video style is more like my older videos, so just let me know in the comments if you like this or not, and I will see you in the next one. Peace! No, I don't say peace. Yo! No, that's the intro. Ciao! <laughs>